What's going on, everybody? For USA Muay Thai, this is Nate Freeman. Today, I'm joined by the 2023 81-kilo elite USA champion, Jabril Aleem. Jabril, how are you today? Hey, man, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling blessed, man. How you feeling? Can't complain. I'm awesome. having a good Sunday. So um, so let's go ahead and dive right into um, how you got to be um, the 81-kilo elite American champion. Um at the tournament itself, you won a unanimous decision over Chris Arena in the semifinals, mm -hmm. and you scored a TKO victory over Grayson Cicadas um, in the finals. Talk mm -hmm. to me about your um, experience at the tournament this year, um, and talk to me about the competitions themselves and then the overall experience. All right, for sure. Well, you know, it was a, it was a dope experience, man. Um, so I did the tournament last year. Um, and I lost uh, in the first round against like a real savvy veteran. Um, I fought uh, Zach Bunnell, who wound up getting the silver last year. Um, and it was a split decision. I felt like, you know, a few tweaks and I could have made it very clear um, just, you know, for the judges um, that I, I should have won. But I think what I took from that experience was, you know, the time leading up to it, a lot of, you know, athletes got out there days early to try to you know acclimate to the denver elevation which is hey that, that boy's a woozy right there <laughs> um and so you know everybody would be training over at um easton um and a few other places and i got to see how like some really high level guys um were doing their training you know guys like um eddie guys like aaron ortiz um and, and a whole bunch of other people, you know, I got the chance to hit some pads with them, hit back side by side with them, man. Uh, just doing that, um, despite the outcome of last year's tournament for myself, it kind of um, reassured me and knowing that, you know, I'm taking a lot of the right steps um, just as far as like my preparation and my training goes. Um, and so, you know, I tried to take that momentum and those lessons learned from last year um, coming into this tournament. So seeing the brackets ahead of time, uh, it was a real interesting bracket uh, for all of us. I think, you know, um, I, I kind of nicknamed it Murderer's Row just, just because, you know, it was a lot of the um, best quality guys that fight at the 178, 179 division and were all like tall, lanky, southpaws at that like it was four of us <laughs> all of us uh fight southpaw and of the other three guys um was it two of them um were rematches for me or people i fought previously so that's julian um and that's chris arena and then the other guy um grayson um uh, he had just fought my teammate and defeated him uh, about four or five weeks prior and I was actually uh, my teammate's corner for that fight. So it was a, it was a real interesting dynamic for me uh, just coming in. So, you know, with those rematches, potential rematches against uh, both Julian and uh, Chris, I, I kind of knew, you know, I, I had defeated them the first time around. And you know, I know anytime somebody has a rematch slated, um, you know, they're coming with something extra. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to get you out of there. They're trying to prove a point. They're trying to make sure that they fight better than they fought the last time. And they're trying to learn lessons from what you were able to like uh, do against them the last time. So, you know, I was really trying to make sure that I was on point with those potential rematches, just knowing like, you know, they, they know some of my strengths. Um, maybe, you know, there's some weaknesses they think they might be able to exploit. So I, it's, it's time for me to, you know, kind of close those up. And then with Grayson, I knew he was like a really tough fighter, really good competitor. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, the way he fought um, my teammate previously, um, that he wouldn't be able to use those same tools against me. And he would have to, you know, uh, move a little outside of his comfort zone if he wanted to, you know, be victorious and everything. So um, I, I caught the draw with Chris on the first round. Um, and that was a fun fight. Um, you know, it was, it was a pretty clean and distanced fight. So I was able to show. Um, how I can fight at long distance um, because I, you know, in a good chunk of my fights, I take on a very Muay Thai um, approach. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think that people don't realize that I can fight outside of the clinch and outside of knees and elbows. Um, and so, you know, I, I took that as an opportunity to you know, showcase that. Um, and like I said, I was awarded a unanimous victory against Chris. And I, you know, I felt pretty, you know, in control all three rounds. 
Um, and, you know, Chris is a really great competitor as well. And he's native to Colorado. So, you know, <laughs> something that I wanted to be aware of was the fact that he would be able to push uh, the cardio and not be as impacted by the elevation, you know, as the rest of the field would be. Uh, so, you know, I took a few different strategies to, you know, prevent him from, you know, just trying to run the cardio up, you know what I'm saying? So that means I had to like put off some really hard counters and stuff his shots, and, you know, stuff his momentum before he was able to get going. Um, and then uh, also in that first round, Grayson fought Julian. So that meant it wasn't going to be two rematches for me. I had a new opponent. And I think he uh, defeated Julian by second round TKL. Uh, so coming into that fight, you know, um, I know it was, you know, I think it's usually fights at 168. And I usually fight at, you know, in the 70s. Uh, but we're about the same weight, um, you know, come fight day and everything. So, but, you know, I felt like, you know, I had a strength advantage over him. And uh, one thing that my uh, corner was reminding me um between rounds and, you know, leading into the fight was, you know, I'm a longer guy. I'm not like, ah, he has to come to me no matter what he does. You know what I'm saying? And Grayson has like a very, um, a very high pace. He throws a lot of feints um, and he likes to dart in and out. But, you know, at the end of the day, I had the reach advantage. And, you know, if he wanted to hit me, you know, he was going to have to, you know, he was going to have to come to me. Um, or risk staying on the outside at my range and, you know, kind of letting me just do whatever it is that I want to do. Um, and so, you know, we kind of started off as a little feel for his range. And like what type of, you know, and fight me, you know, you would dart in with some punches. And, you know, I would counter a little bit and start, you know, catching him with some kicks and some and he wasn't getting out of there in time when he was darting in. Uh, so, you know, I would clinch him up and then I was kind of, you know, testing him out in the clinch and I realized, like, you know, I had a, a pretty big clinch advantage. And that's uh, generally where the fight stayed from that point on. You know, I think, you know, he realized he was down after round one and he was going to have to, you know, kind of pick up the pace and do something to take round two. Um, but, you know, the problem being, like, he was going to me to be able to use my clinch advantage and you know i kind of i was able to use like a lot of like really strong knees and elbows to kind of you know to tire them out and wear them out in the clinch um like i said i, I really love clinch and boycott style um and, you know for those reasons a lot of people it, it's, it's kind of like swimming you know what i mean like everybody's very comfortable you know on the outside and that's where they practice their pad work but you know when you get in a clinch with somebody that you know knows how to clinch very well and it's and likes that, it can feel like you're drowning. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that kind of sapped a lot of the energy and creativity out of Grayson. And you know, eventually I got like the third round TKO off of uh, some knees, some of the knees. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, so following up on that, what, um, especially after um, coming back from the World Games qualifiers last right. year, um, what does it mean to you to – be the representative not only for this weight class in America, but to be representing America on the international stage going to Thailand in May. That is really big, man. Uh, IFMA is the most prestigious tournament that you can do worldwide pro am. You know, uh, every country sends their best, and it, it, it's the most recognized um, accomplishment you can kind of get at this stage. And, and, you know, for me, it's, it's really big to be able to represent American Muay Thai um, just because I feel like I, I represent a level of like diversity within Muay Thai. Just, you know, not only about, you know, what I look like, but also just like where we are in life. You know, like I'm 30, I'm married, I have a full time job and I find time for Muay Thai um, because it's a passion of mine. You know what I'm saying? And that kind of differs from what it may look like in other countries. You know, it might be somebody that's, you know, 19, 20, and all they do is fight. You know what I mean? And I think the American Muay Thai, because of the stage where we're at, um, there's, there's, there's this big variation in what a Nak Muay in the U.S. looks like. So, you know, it feels amazing to be able to represent, you know, the country I was born in um, on an international stage and to be able to show, you know, get there and show, have a good showing 
Um, but it also really feels good to represent for within the United States, you know, it's kind of, it's never too late to pick up more tie, you know, as a hobby, it's never too late to be competitive. Um, it's never too late to, you know, really push yourself and test the limits of what you can achieve um, with Muay Thai or just, you know, any hobby or, you know, what have you um, that you're interested in. If it's something you're passionate about, you know, just continuously improve, you know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling, honestly. Yeah, I love it. Um, so let's talk about training. Um, mm -hmm. What exactly are you working on to sharpen your tools um, to prepare to, like I said, um, represent America in May at the mm -hmm. World Championships. Um, is there anything in particular that you're trying to improve on in order to uh, be the best version of yourself? Yeah, man. Um, so I've been uh, used to a lot of like five round fights um, recently. And, you know, even in my three round fights, you know, I generally like to take a little bit a little bit of time in the beginning of a fight to kind of you know fill out my opponent uh and, and you know just kind of figure out things like range what they like to do so i can kind of begin to shut those things down and implement my game plan um so something that i've been working on after you know watching a lot of the um if my bouts you know just starting a little quicker having a little bit more volume um Sometimes, you know, with IFMA scoring and, you know, the tournament style is less so about the significance of a shot. And sometimes it's a little bit more about accumulation of damage, you know. So with that, you know, I can't take two shots and throw back one, but my one is just harder. You know, i got to make sure that I'm, you know, matching pace and matching output. So uh, it's just a slightly different approach, but, you know, still trying to maintain the aspects of my game that, you know, made me successful, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, but yeah, just trying to make sure I rack up points outside of the clinch. Cause you know, sometimes you may have a judge that may break a clinch a little early, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe they want you to be working a little faster um, in a clinch or in, in, in those scenarios. So making sure that, you know, I'm winning at all aspects of the fight and not just the aspects that, you know, I'm most dominant in. Yeah, that makes sense. And you're doing all of this during Ramadan. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that that is an especially um, difficult time with training. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about um, what that looks like um, training during such a, um, I guess, challenging time. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's difficult physically, you know. So um, for those that aren't the most familiar with Ramadan, um, we don't eat or drink uh, from dawn to dusk at sunrise to sunset. Uh, and so, you know, the time differs depending on where you are. But in Chicago, that's about 4.45 a.m. to about right now, about 7.35 p.m. Um, that I'm not eating or drinking. That pretty much covers all the time <laughs> uh, that I would be training. Um, and, you know, one of the more difficult things to deal with is just, you know, the hydration, um, just the intake of water and electrolytes uh, throughout your workouts. So, you know, I'll you know, wake up in the morning around uh, 4.45 or so, um, eat and drink a little bit, and um, and then try to, you know, take a nap before I go out and train for the first time for the day. So I'll go to boxing training um, from 9 to 10. Um, then I'll do work um, until about... 3 30, 4 o'clock. Um, and then from there, um, I'll kind of move on and I'll go and do my Muay Thai, Muay Thai training in the afternoon. And that'll consist of uh, about 10 rounds of pad work, um, about an hour and some change of strength and conditioning, and then another eight to 10 rounds of bag work. And so, you know, all in all, that'll give me, that'll be me training from about like 30 to like almost nine o'clock you know what i'm saying and the majority of that um being you know thirsty or hungry or tired um and so you know so it's a good mental push you know what i mean something that i try to remind myself of um or just like you know some of the spiritual lessons in ramadan which is the ability to you know separate mentally from any type of like physical suffering right so it's that uh mental fortitude but also, you know, if I'm like, you know, kind of doing my rounds and I'm starting to fill it a little bit, you know, just trying to equate that to what that may look like in a fight. You know what I mean? And just having the 
like I said, the mental fortitude to push through, right? Um, like I, I could ask my my trainer, my pad guy, um, you know, if he could slow the pace down or you know give me a couple rounds off to rest. Um, but you know, something I try to remind myself is, you know, is a mantra of like nobody asked you, you know what I'm saying? Nobody asked you for your excuses, um, and nobody said you had to do this. So you know, kind of suck it up and find a way to get it done. And enjoy you know what i'm saying the growth from that you know what i mean so uh it, it's 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 a push man but you know uh, i try to do what i can to make sure that i'm not you know just out there running myself ragged so you know when it's time to break fast i'm usually at the gym i'll step aside pray uh probably drink a protein shake drink some water and you know get, try to get right back to it um and finish up before you know i go home and you know spend the rest of the day you know with my family that's great. Um, is this the, I assume this isn't the first time that you've um, trained for any competition during Ramadan. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, the past two years I've actually fought during Ramadan, um, which, you know, for me, just is, is, it's a very like interesting uh, spiritual uh, experience. You know, you, I'm during this time and, you know, the purpose of fasting is to try to, uh, put yourself in a place where um, you're focused more on your spiritual and less on your physical. And through that, trying to find yourself, you know, closer to God, closer to your creator um, and trying to, you know, uh, strengthen that connection. Um, and then on top of that, participating in a combat sport um, during that month, you know, it, it could be really powerful and it has been for me and it's brought me to the verge of tears because, you know, in this process of, you know, trying to strengthen my connection to God and to the creator. Um, I'm, I'm heading to this combat sport where, you know, it rarely happens, but there is a reality that like things can go wrong, you know, and we're, and we're choosing that. And, you know, trying to find myself where, at a place where, you know, I'm at peace with any outcome, however um, damaging it could potentially be to me and trying to find that peace within God, you know what I'm saying, and within our creator. And so, you know, uh, before my bouts, I always try to, you know, take the time aside to pray. And then after that, just like the spirit of calm just really tends to like wash over me. Um, and, you know, going into the fight, my thoughts are that, you know, I'm at peace with my God. You know what I mean? And at that point, an outcome of a uh, competition becomes trivial to me. And that's what allows me to kind of, you know, breathe, relax and go out there, you know, have fun and, you know, put my best into it and not be too tense and not be too nervous. Like all that nervousness kind of disappears. So, you know, it, it's a very strong, but like, you know, really good experience, I think. Has it gotten any easier over the course of the past few years that you've done it? Have you sort of learned how to manage everything better throughout this time? Um, or is it just a sense of it's hard no matter what? Does that make it's sense? Yeah, it's it's hard no matter what, but two things have helped. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, Ramadan falls on the Islamic calendar, which is lunar calendar, which is about eleven days shorter than um, the solar calendar that we typically follow. So, uh, Ramadan moves up about eleven days every year, and there was a point where it was like dead in the middle of summer, like June, July, and then you know because it's moving up every day. Uh, the days are a little bit shorter than they were last year, you know, and it's a little bit shorter than they were the year before that. So in a practical sense, it's a little bit easier in that sense. Like maybe I'm fasting until 745 versus 845 two years ago. Yeah. So there, there's that bit. Um, and then another bit that has helped make it, you know, a little bit more easy is just, you know, learning how to manage my energy levels throughout the day and, you know, what time is best to, you know, start really hard training. So I'll typically try to start, you know, the hardest training in my day, you know, towards the end of the day. So that, you know, halfway through, I'm able to like eat, eat, drink, replenish really quickly and then kind of finish it out. So, you know, it's just a learning process about, you know, how my body responds to, you know, being a little under hydrated or, or malnourished during the day and what I need to be able to get through. <laughs> Yeah, but, that's you know, crazy. It's a little, a little difficult, regardless. But <laughs> no, it makes absolutely, it a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. That 
that makes sense. Um, all right, so let's take a couple steps back um, and talk about um, how you got into Muay Thai. Um, go ahead, um, for those that don't know, maybe share the story about um, how you came into the sport of Muay Thai yeah. and what made you fall in love with it and um, how you got to where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So I've been training Muay Thai for four years now. Um, and, you know, I've always kind of been um, a physically active guy. So, you know, after work, I'll, I'll you go work out. And that's always kind of been my routine. Uh, you know, and I played a lot of basketball um, even now. Uh, so about four years ago, I was, you know, thinking to myself that, you know, I wanted to learn a new skill and I wanted to try to learn how to do something just in general that I would enjoy and be able to stick to and get better at. And just knowing that I've always been kind of inclined towards physical activity. You know, I gave myself, uh, it was going to be one of two things. So I was either going to learn how to salsa dance or do Muay Thai, right? <laughs> and so, uh, Needless to say, we kind of uh, settled in on uh, me doing Muay Thai. And, you know, I remember the first day I went to my current gym, which is Chicago Muay Thai. And I went there for a trial, you know, just to test it out and see, you know, what it was like. And I walked in and it was like this smell of sweat and people working um, that, like, was really familiar to me as a former mm -hmm. athlete. Where it's like, I know kind of the difference between you know, a commercial gym where people are going just to get a workout and one where it's like people are really putting their work there. You know what I mean? So uh, that was going to be my place, man. And I started out just going like two times a week on the weekends. And then I, I really got addicted to just getting better and improving. You know, I started to really like the nuance and the striking art and, you know, wanted to get, wanted to perfect my jab, wanted to perfect my rear kick, wanted to learn how to do this technique and do that technique. And, you know, that that transformed into me going, you know, five and six times a week just because I felt like there was always something to learn. And I still feel like that. Um, and, you know, with me being in there so much, um, you know, I started going to sparring classes and, you know, uh, being able to hang there. And, you know, in general, I'm a very competitive guy. You know what I mean? I, I kind of always want to be able to test myself. And, you know, that's what led me to competition in Muay Thai. You know, I didn't step in wanting to be a fighter or wanting to fight. It's just, uh, you know, I'm really competitive. So the better I got at something, the more I wanted to test it um, in the fire. And so, uh, you know, I didn't uh, start off with any smokers or anything like that. Um, surprisingly, I went straight to a sanctioned fight um, and had a fight against a guy with uh, four fights. And it was my first fight. And... You know, I was, I was super nervous, but, you know, uh, just ready to put it all out there, you know, and I, and I had good success, man. I won my first fight, and, you know, from there, just been on this journey of, like, wanting to uh, continuously improve um, and taking up, you know, any opportunity I could to improve, you know. So I've, I've been pretty big on, like, the national uh, tournament circuit uh, since I've started. And, you know, a big thing with that has always been, you know, I I wanted to go wherever I thought the best competition would be. So that's taken me out of Chicago to South Carolina for IKF and Florida for IKF and uh, to the East Coast for WKA and to Iowa for TBAs and to the West Coast for USMTO. You know, I, I've, I've kind of traveled around and done all those tournaments multiple times because, you know, I want to be able to test myself against, you know, who, who's the best out there and where the talent is. So, yeah, man, I'm just a really competitive dude, man. Not not even particularly, you know, violent or anything like that, just really competitive. Um, but, you know, something I will say is, you know, during this journey, uh, I kind of fell in love with, like, the lore and the art of Muay Thai. You know what I'm saying? And it's something that I've, that I've learned to find very beautiful and you know, the strategies and the tactics of Muay Thai and like the emphasis on clean technique um, and, you know, pre-fight rituals like why crew around boys and, you know, the adoption of a style um, of technique, whether you're Muay Femur, Muay Ma, Muay Kao, um, you know, Muay Tay, what have you, and, and, and how it kind of plays into like the culture of Thailand itself. Um, I, I find it very beautiful. And it's one of the things that, 
make me uh, just like a Muay Thai specialist. You know, I don't particularly uh, compete in kickboxing. I have no uh, aspirations to do MMA because, you know, I find Muay Thai to be such a beautiful art in itself. And that's what I want to be uh, perfecting myself. So, you know, kind of to tie that back in, it's super big for me to be able to go to Thailand for the first time and be competing and representing our country um, there because of that. You know, this is my first experience in Thailand. So I'm you know, really excited to, you know, see the culture around Muay Thai um, and the culture of Thailand itself while we're over there as well. Yeah, it's, I mean, anybody who is a Muay Thai athlete, I mean, at some point it seems like has to go to Thailand. So yeah. um, congratulations on um, being able to make it there and, and go there for the first time um, mm -hmm. as a part of USA Muay Thai. Um, okay, so really quick, I want to ask you just a few rapid fire questions just so people can get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Uh, one, what is your favorite striking technique? Rear kick. I like it. Um, your favorite either book or movie? Um, my favorite movie changes so often. Uh, Payton Fool is one of them, and I'll sit on that for right now. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite books. Um, I'm into fantasy books, so um, there's a lot of things in the like Lord of the Rings uh, genre that I like to read. I like it. Yeah, that okay. all of my friends like those things too, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to get into it. Um, I just it, it can be intimidating when the books are like that big. But, the books are so um, thick, man. So thick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it can be it intimidating. Either, it would have to be that them. or just in general, the Harry Potter series, because it meant so much. Like going through my childhood, I remember I would find out. I don't even know how I would find out because there was no Internet, really. I would find out the new Harry Potter book is coming out on June 19th. And I would have my mom take me up to Barnes and Nobles. And I'd be in line and I'd go get the book and then I'd be in the car ride home reading it. And I'd be done with the book super thick in like two days because that's oh all I did. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, so your favorite uh, Muay Thai athlete and then if your favorite athlete in general isn't a Muay Thai or combat sports athlete, what who's your favorite athlete overall? Um, my favorite Muay Thai athlete, Talon Chai right now. Uh, Taon Chai is a, a big favorite currently. Southpaw is super slick, cold blooded, um, and really technical. But like all his all of his strikes have power, you know. What I mean, and so I love watching him fight. Historically, um, it definitely be smart, man. He kind of blended styles of Western boxing and Muay Thai and stand switching so beautifully that you know he he always looked in control and he he. He was able to pull out a strike or a defense from any angle, you know what I mean, or change direction so crazily. So uh, there's that. My favorite um, athletes of all time would have to be uh, LeBron James is up there. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. So, you know, I've been watching LeBron play since I was in, I think, like fourth grade. And, like, we would go to um, his games when he was in high school. And I remember going there for the first time on that saying, hey, man, it's this guy named LeBron. And he's like the tallest human being I'd ever seen in my life at that <laughs> point. And, you know, watching him you know, bring titles to Cleveland, like that's priceless. Um, and then Israel Adesanya from a um, MMA standpoint, I love his strike and I love his focus on kickboxing. So shout out to him for his victory last night. Yeah, man, gosh, then, that was such a sick. knockout, my word. Man, it was I was I was worried when he when he started covering up, but I had never seen him cover up like that. So I was a little curious as to why he was doing it. But to see that he was kind of planning out that counter once he got Alex Prayer to be a little over aggressive. That was just that was a beautiful counter, man. I'm so happy for him to kind of climb that mountain and this guy that beat him three times in a row, has knocked him out twice in a row and to be able to climb that and fight. You know, what I mean, like that was, that was dope to see that determination. And then lastly, favorite athlete would have to be uh, Muhammad Ali just for what he meant for me, like as a, a black Muslim in the United States and what he meant like uh, socially and politically, you know, being able to stand behind what he thought, you know, what he felt was righteousness 
and to combine that with just continued dominance um, of his sport while he was at his peak. So, you know, those, those are definitely my three favorite athletes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, if you had any advice for yourself as you was, as you were getting started in Muay Thai, um, if you, uh, where you are now could speak to that person, mm -hmm. what would you say? I'll, I'll say, man, just stick with it, man. Stay, remain consistent and be patient. Um, take your time man, and just make sure you're, you're focusing on technique at all times, man. Like technique will make it so much easier rather than trying to like dog fight it out or test how tough you are. If you're focusing on technique, man, the power will come, the precision will come, the timing will come. And, you know, you won't, you'll never have to prove how tough you are. You know what I'm saying? If you just take your time and focus on technique, man. I love it. Um, all right. So before I let you go, um, yeah. I'm going to give you the floor for three things. One, how can people follow you on social media? Two, mm -hmm. how can people support you in your journey to Thailand? I know, um, I be or I, I believe that there is a GoFundMe for you and your teammate, Alex Hernandez. Mm -hmm. um, and then three, um, I'll give you the floor to do any shout outs for any coaches, teammates, mm -hmm. sponsors, anything like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, my my name is at Brill underscore Lent. So any of my social media, it's like it's just a pun on my name. My name is Jabril. Everybody always called me brilliant growing up. So it's B-R-I-L underscore L-I-A-N-T um, on Instagram. That's where you can follow me. Um, post Muay Thai bid, post a personal life as well. It's a combined page. So sometimes funny memes, sometimes just life, man. So uh, hopefully it's a, it's a good follow if, that, if you're already there. Thank you. Um, and if you want to support... Um, Myself and my teammate Alex, we have a, a who's also um, selected uh, by USA Muay Thai to go compete in Thailand. We have a joint um, girl fund me, um, and the link is in my bio. Um, and so, you know, getting out there, you know, we have to pay our own way. Uh, things could get expensive, you know, flight tickets, hotel stays. If you want to get there a, a few days early to acclimate to the humidity and try to get some training, you got to pay for that too. Food, while you're out there, we're athletes burning a lot of calories. So, you know, if, if you would like to, you know, support us, um, you can always uh, click the GoFundMe um, on our page. You can also DM me uh, if you want to talk about Venmo, Cash App, anything like that. Five dollars helps. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Five dollars can go a long way uh when you're over in thailand so you know that that's always much appreciated and then lastly you know i just want to shout out to uh my team in general so um i want to shout out you know everybody at chicago muay thai uh that helps us train whether it be sparring partners or the owner jim glasgow just for like opening his doors and creating a welcoming uh climate you know just for us to be able to compete and be hobbyists at that um, I definitely want to shout out uh, my, my main brothers uh, at, at Chicago Muay Thai, my, my guys, man, uh, uh, Augie, Andre Finley, man, he, he's, he's, my, uh, he's my primary pad guy, my primary corner, you know, my brother in arms and coaching, like, you know, when we're figuring out strategy and how we're going to fight somebody and what we're going to work on in this camp, man, that's my guy, man. And it's like he, he sacrifices a lot of time. Uh, just to, you know, hold pass for me and help me get better and help, help me, you know, get to whatever goal it is. I have pads, whether it be he might travel to New York or whatever with me for a fight, man. Like, definitely shout out to him, man. Um, you know, he's a hell of a fighter in his own right, man. I think he's 22 and five, you know what I mean, himself, you know. So for him to take the time out to, you know, make sure his homies is getting better, that's big. And then also my primary sparring partner, uh, Jeffrey Freeline, man. He's he's a, he's a dope dude. Glad to call him my brother, man. Anytime we're both in camp together, like we are right now, he has a fight in, I want to say, two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, it, it's just magic, man. We're always holding extra pass for each other, getting sparring, drilling in, working over concepts, you know what I mean? And you know, we again, we take out the time to make sure that, you know, each other um, is doing well. I want to also shout out, you know, the gym that I do a lot of boxing and hand work at. 
Um, that's Tri-City Boxing out in St. Charles, Illinois, under the great tutelage of the big homie Pat White, man. Um, thank you for opening your doors and thank you for, you know, helping me, you know, work different aspects that, you know, and really putting that focus on on hands, you know what I'm saying, and, and boxing offense and defense and concepts that, you know, I'm able to bring to more Thai as well. Um, and then lastly, you know, I want to I want to thank, you know, my family, of course, you know what I'm saying? So that starts with my wife. She's super supportive. Um, man, it's, it's, it's a lot, man. She, she jokes all the time that, you know, uh, my, my wife's a dentist, I'm a PhD. And she's like, I didn't think I was marrying a semi-pro athlete. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that wasn't the life that I thought I was signing up for, but she's super supportive. And she's like, I'm here for you, you know, just following your dreams and following your passions. And, you know, it definitely takes me away from home. And it's like, you know, we're at times like today where I'm going I'm to do some house chores and then I'm going to go train a little bit later. You know, I'm sure she would rather have me at home and like us watching TV or something like that. Um, so, you know, I never want to understate her sacrifices. And then, you know, just my family at large, my cousins, uh, my brother, uh, my mom and my dad, they're all super proud of me. And, you know, again, you know, it's coming from, you know, being a guy that's been academic uh, his whole life and then kind of them seeing me, you know, pick up this hobby and take it to, you know, levels that they didn't know existed within it. Um, they've been nothing but supportive and proud of me, you know, in this aspect of my life as well. So, you know, I definitely want to thank them. And then, you know, all of my friends, my frat brothers, the alphas, you know what I'm saying, Kappa Chapter, Alpha Ohio, man, like they don't do nothing but show love. When I got a fight, man, they travel uh, to support me. I have people traveling from Ohio to New York for my last fight. Uh, and, you know, it, the support has always felt, man, that's that brotherhood, man. Cities of population, too. Y'all know what it's up. And, you know. Just generally, any of my friends, anybody I've come across, man, like the words that support me so much, man. And, you know, it's something that helps, you know, motivate me when I'm tired and I'm thirsty and I want to keep going or I'm out there and I'm, and I'm, you know, getting ready to fight, you know, some world ranked guy in Bangkok and my homie Leroy says, man, you better not go out there to lose. So, you know, <laughs> hey, man, I, I appreciate all y'all, man. And, you know, yeah, man. This has been Jabril Aleem. You can catch yes, Jabril competing um, in May at the IFMA World Championships, um, representing USA Muay Thai in the 81 Kilo Elite Division. Yes, Jabril, sir. thank you so much for your time, and you. best of luck in May. Let us know how we can help you. All right. Much appreciated. Great talk with you, man. Yeah.